Oh, hello everybody, my name is Forrest Stanley and I'm an engineer here at NetBurner. Uh, I wanted to take a moment today to give a quick demo of one of our devices. This is a demo that we gave at a recent NetBurner training seminar and we're gonna take one of our Mod 54415 modules, hook up a luminosity sensor and send that data to the cloud. This is what you're seeing on the screen right now is our Mod 54415 uh, module. This is a $99 module. It basically allows you to connect and control a lot of devices. In the case of this example, we are going to be using I squared C to communicate with this sensor. And the sensor is an Adafruit sensor. This is the TSL 2561. It's basically a light meter. So it's going to read the lux of whatever it's pointing at. Lux being how much light is filled in that in that area. So in this example I'm going to write the code for the module, send the code to the device, we'll uh, have a look at what the sensor is currently reading so we'll get a value of the lux right now. And then once we get all that done and verified that it's working, we'll send that data up to Zively, which is a cloud service provider that we like to use uh, in our examples. They're really neat communication service that lets you talk and send your data out to the web or send it to your iPhone and basically view it wherever you want to be. So I want to jump right into this, so let's have a look at NB Eclipse, which is our development suite. And the first thing we're going to do is create a project for this application. And I need to find the module that I'm currently talking to. So I double check and verify that this is the module sitting on my desk. And I'm going to use the app wizard to give me a skeleton application. And here's the basic application we got started. So this is just an application that is going to sit there and, and really do nothing. You can see the while loop. This is the meat of the application. So this is where everything's going. And the first thing I want to do is take the driver for this Lux meter and import it into this project. And we basically took the Adafruit driver this open source driver available on GitHub and modified it to work with our with with our code so it's gonna use I squared C of, of our driver so the next step that means is that I need to go to this application and import my own modified device driver for this application So this is pulling down my most recent changed driver for the TSL 2561 and it's going to place it into my project. I'm refreshing it just so you can see it. So here's the driver for this uh, sensor. And these, if you, if you look at my device right now, you can see that I've already plugged in the module. I've already set up the pins to be correct. The pins you're seeing on the screen is actually the process of what you would plug in if you didn't have it preset up. So you take power and ground and the two I squared C lines running into the mod 5415 right here. And let's jump back over here. So first thing we want to do now is to get this sensor working and we want to see the output to verify that we're reading some correct values so what I'm gonna do now is create the sensor and you can see I I'm using a lot of autocomplete oh you know what I need to do first is 
How about I include that driver? Because I want it to work. So that is the I squared C address of the device, that, that define right there. And now I need to initialize the device. So that built that looks good. And I want to read the value of the device now. And you can see I need to provide two variables right here that I'm going to create. So what this is doing now is filling in these two variables with the visible and the IR light that the device is seeing. So to print that out on the serial port, I'm just going to say So now what this application is doing is every second, so 20 is a one second delay, it needs to read the current spectrum of light, which is the visible and the IR, and print it out on the serial port. So right now, I've got a very basic sensor application that does a lot of what I needed to do. So when I push play, it sends the code for this application over the ethernet to the module, which is now probably about now rebooted and is running and we can see the output from the device. And sure enough, there is my IR light and my visible spectrum light. And I can verify this. I'm going to cover it up and you'll see it drop. And when I let go, I'm back to the ambient light in the room. Now to calculate the lux, it's just going to run a formula against these two values. So instead of getting my visible and, and IR light, I'm going to change this to get the lux. Oop. Calculate lux. And that just takes the two variables that I've already collected. And let's set that to a variable. And instead of printing out these two variables, I just want to collect Lux here, because that's that's really what I'm going to send to to the cloud once I set that all up. So now when I push play, again, just loaded the the new application to the device. I come back over here, I can see it rebooting, and I'm getting a real Lux value. And Lux can vary pretty greatly. I've seen it go down to zero and one in a, in a dark midnight time of night where there's absolutely no light. And when this device is in bright sunlight, bright direct sunlight, you'll see it at maybe 40,000, 50,000. It really drops off though when it's not in direct sunlight. So a typical office room may be about five to six hundred. You see it's reading 850 right now here. And just the ambient daylight is gonna be two to three thousand is a correct value. And you can see it once again I'm covering it up again and it's dropping down. And if I really cover it as close as I can, it's pretty dark, so it's it's got a pretty low number now and bring it back and so we've got the sensor working we've got that part of this application going now what I want to do is send this data out to Zively the cloud so I am going to add the Zively code to this app so first include 
the Zively library. If you are running our tools already, you have the Zively library installed if you're running 2.6.5 or greater. So if you're not running the latest version of the code, you, you need to update before you try to run this application along with me. So now I need to write the Zively part of everything. So I'm going to create a context. Uh, you know what? If I save, now my autocompletes will work. So it's important to, if you utilize autocomplete, which I do a lot, it's best to save whenever you modify everything. So I'm going to create a context. And a context is just, it, it explains how you're going to connect to Zively. So in my case, you specify the, the API key that Zively gives you, the feed ID of what you're updating, and I'm going to update over TCP. So Now this will fail because I don't have API key and feed ID defined yet. So let's set that part up. I like to use these as defines. So I can just copy this code into other applications that I'm running. These values are going to be located on the Zively web page. So at this point, I've already gone in and pre-created a device on Zively. So I have a API key which is gives me rights to send information to this account. And if I go back, I also want to grab the feed ID. And the feed ID is which device I'm sending this data to, because you can have multiple devices on Zively. Now you probably are thinking maybe you can steal my account because you see my API key right here. It is tied to the device. So you see right here, this API key has full rights, but I can easily regenerate this key and lock out this old API once I'm done with this demo. So even though you can see this, you're, you're not going to have access to my account. So nice try. Um, jumping back into the code, now we're building. And the next thing we need to create is a data point. A data point is just data in time. So it's got a value and it's got a time when it was, when the value was set. And that is basically what you're going to be sending to Zively. So this data point is going to hold the wh whatever the current lux value is of the sensor. So after we calculate the lux value, I need to send this data to Zively. So the first thing I do is set the value of my data point. to my lux value. Oop. And then I want to set the timestamp to zero. And that sounds weird, but it makes sense. When it's zero, Zively will manage the time. If I set the time myself, so when it's zero, Zively will, will set the time when it receives the packet. If I set the time myself, I could, I could manage when the current reading is, but since I'm only setting one value and I know it's happening right now, I really don't want to be concerned with worried about what the current time is. It'll just add code to this application. So I have a data point. I've set its value and I've set its timestamp. Now I just need to send it to Zively. And that is another single line statement. 
So I'll provide the context, which was set up above. Feed ID one more time. The variable I want to update, so in my case, I want to update Lux. So set that to Lux. And the data point I'm sending. Oh, should be data, not data point. So now this application is almost done. You see how we're waiting for a one second delay here? Although you could send the data up to Zively on a one second delay, they prefer that you limit your time, your updates a little bit. So I'm gonna, instead of doing a one second delay here, I'm gonna make it a 30 second delay. So now I'm gonna collect the reading once every 30 seconds and send that data up to Zively. If I press play, let's hope everything works. I'm thinking it will. So you can see the device is rebooting. It's gonna start, it's got a value 853 right now. And if we pop back over to Zively and refresh, let's refresh the website, it's 853. So there it is. And I really only had to refresh because that was a new value coming in. Going forward, if I'm if I sit here and watch for another 30 seconds, and I'm going to cover the light switch again so, so we see a change here. So, oh, there it goes. So right now with it covered, you saw it just update. And I uncover it, and it should go back to whatever the current reading was, which was 853. Now remember, this is going only twice a minute now, so we really have to sit here if we want to see it update again. but. That really is the gist of this whole application. I, I, I wanted to show how easy it was to both send data up to the cloud and write applications on the NetBurner device. So hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you have any questions about what I did here, our kits, or cloud computing in general, you can reach us at www.netburner.com or at Twitter at NetBurner or sales at netburner.com if you want to reach us on email. Thanks a lot.